Hello everyone, Richard here. I uh, just wanted to quickly give you an update on the uh, universal filament uh, spool standard uh, that I proposed a few months back. Uh, I've been doing a, a lot of um, uh, discussions with people, having some great uh, talks about the standard, about possibilities for uh, making standard reel sizes for 3D printing and the difficulties and challenges with doing that. So uh, here's just a bit of an update for you of, of where we're at and some of the ideas that have come out that are really starting to shine. Okay, so first of all, um, I proposed uh, that we had a, uh, a standard filament size uh, and this is the filament spool size so it can fit onto uh, home 3D printers and industrial 3D printers without having all different types of of spools, sizes, widths, um, and coil uh, uh, diameters. Some, sometimes the coil diameters were getting so small that they were actually causing problems with 3D printing because they were so tight. It does, matter, it does make a difference what, what types of materials you're using, but generally there was, there was issues coming from different types of, of off-the-shelf spools that you can buy that were being uh, materials being wound onto and then sold as 3D printing materials. So, the idea was to try and figure out a way to have a standard that everyone would generally agree to or, or um, want to adopt and see whether that could be pushed uh, or not necessarily pushed but just generally uh, uh, adopted by some of the industry people who are making filament and some of the people who are making machines. So we went about uh, uh, talking to various companies about the challenges they face and the biggest uh, issue that we saw was really that the actual filament spool itself, some of them can be very, very big and heavy and take a lot of plastic. A lot of them are made of plastic and actually that's quite a waste because they get disposed of, they get thrown away and um, you're paying for them when you ship that around the world or when you, when you buy it from your local supplier. So the first thing we wanted to really look at was how we make a cheaper um, or less heavy or both, hopefully, and ecologically friendly as well, so something that could be recycled would be great. The idea was to make it also take up a lot less space. At the moment, some of these spools, this one you can actually snap apart and it's in three parts. Most of them are just injection molded. Uh, the Color Fab ones are, are an injection molded piece of polycarbonate, which looks fantastic, but uh, it's quite an expensive, expensive spool. It's very high quality, very impact resistant, but it's a real shame that most people will actually just throw them away because they can't even really be recycled uh, any, in any particular, particularly good way. So the idea was to, to try and again, try and find a way to make those more, uh, more easier for people to manufacture and to sell and distribute and hopefully recycle. Uh, that led to some really good discussions about the use of cardboard and all sorts of other types of materials, almost like paper mache type materials uh, to uh, all sorts of other interesting ways to reduce the weight and size of a spool. Um, one of the best conversations I had was with Colorfab, and they had spent quite a long time investigating and looking at this problem as well, because they know uh, they want to produce something that looks great, but they also want to reduce the weight and the impact on the environment and various other uh, uh, issues that, that are wasting a lot of plastic with spools uh, for a consumable item uh, has. So they introduced me to a company uh, that was doing a really interesting material that was called Biofoam. It's a type of um, PLA and it's in bead, bead pellet format and these, these special pellets actually expand just very similar way to, to the way polystyrene works, expanded polystyrene works. So Polystyrene's uh, really not good for the environment and uh, has some horrible, uh, horrible. Uh, it sits around in the environment for a long time, so really not a good thing. Uh, it's also quite, uh, quite brittle. It wouldn't be any good for a filament spool, and it produces all sorts of um, bits as it breaks off and that sort of thing. So originally, uh, that that was never, never an option. But it led to thinking about the way bio uh, foam could be used to produce a spool. And what's really interesting, there's, a, there's other types of foaming materials as well. There's expanded polypropylene that's used in computer packaging uh, quite uh, extensively. But again, that's quite a flexible material and quite a dense material and difficult, again, to recycle and, and, and break down, that sort of thing. So the good thing about biofoam is that um, you can 
uh, it produces a part that's very, very lightweight. So probably only about a quarter of the weight of a normal spool because these parts basically just inflate with air. And how it works, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting uh, system. You produce a molding tool out of uh, metal and you actually drop a handful of these beads or the right amount of these beads into the tool, seal the tool up and inject hot steam, very hot steam, high pressure steam, and that expands immediately the pellets into the shape and you end up with a molded part. Now, the one thing that we spent quite a lot of time talking to a lot of people about was the, the amount of space that sp spools take up. And the idea again there is to make a tooled part that was a single part that you could uh, use two, two sections of to clip together to make a spool. So actually your tooled bio bead made spool would only be half of this with a clever little clip and a slight conical uh, to allow it to, uh, to, to lock together and to, to, come, uh, to come out of the spool, but also allow it to turn this part over and stack so they could be stacked up on top of each other and take up a lot less space in packaging and storage. So it's sounding like a really interesting way forward to use something like bio beads uh, or biofoam to produce a very, very lightweight, hollow, but very strong uh, spool that can be clipped together or unclipped and stacked up or, uh, or, or actually manufactured and put together on demand as the reels are being manufactured. And w again, one of the, one of the really uh, great things about the biofoam is that it produces a part that's just like a PLA printed part that you'd have on a, a 3D printer. So I really hope you like the sound of um, where the uh, standard, small standard project is going. And at this point, it really is down to people deciding to adopt these types of innovations and, and systems that are out there and available to be used for this type of um, uh, consumable item. The, the use of biofoam and, and these beads that can expand and produce very strong, very lightweight uh, spools for 3D printing and other types of materials and even packaging of all sorts, sorts of types is out there and it would be really good to see when uh, one of the manufacturers use this standard. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, canvassing of opinions of how, how, what people would like for their spool sizes, shapes, dimensions, all that sort of thing which will go into a document that the 3D Printing Association will put up on their website as and an open standard basically that, that was some was basically the feedback of as many people as we could talk to and contact about 3D printing and, ha and uh, the use of, of uh, plastic filament and spools in 3D printing. So there's a lot of there'll be a lot of information in there and links and, and discussions about bio bees. I do hope a manufacturer will decide to go down a route like this and produce a sustainable spool uh, that can be. Uh, have all the benefits that I've discussed along with all sorts of, of, of uh, positive benefits for the, for the environment as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that and it's something that uh, I'm really uh, very keen on is trying to produce uh, common standards uh, for 3D printing. There's all sorts of different variations at the moment which is great and we need that but we also need a few standards and better ways of doing things. So this was just the first attempt to try and rationalise spool sizes because it really really is a, a problem for some people a problem not so much of a problem for others but there's no doubt that a standard spool size would would help machine manufacturers machine developers and um, all sorts of, uh, of of people in the 3d printing industry uh, produce uh, better machines for the consumer and for for the industry uh, so i hope you found that useful and i'll put some links and possibly some uh, more information up on the 3D Printing Association as soon as we possibly can. So thank you ever so much and uh, see you soon.